Hi, this is Jeff Heaton. Welcome to Applications of Deep Neural Networks with Washington University. In this video, we're going to look at how Google Alpha Zero was able to achieve chess superiority without using any human knowledge or looking at previous games. This is end-to-end -end AI where it can teach itself. For the latest on my AI course and projects, click subscribe and the bell next to it to be notified of every new video. Probably one of the biggest deals in artificial intelligence, at least in the last few years, has been some of the research done by Google with their Alpha series. This includes AlphaGo, AlphaZero, and AlphaGo Zero, all these various alpha prefixed technologies that Google has introduced. The latest one that you might have heard of in December 5th, 2017, was the one where Google was able to beat something called Stockfish. Stockfish is one of the most advanced computer chess playing games that's available. It's also open source. Incidentally, Alpha Zero, which defeated it by Google, is not open source. So this is a technology introduced by Google that was able to beat Stockfish, which had been developed over a decade using chess masters and lots of human intelligence built into it. Alpha Zero was able to learn chess entirely on its own. They gave it 40 days to work on it. It was able to achieve results that were able to beat Stockfish well before that 40 days was up, but they gave it 40 days essentially to learn and master chess, and it completely mastered chess. It was able to beat the previous also in on the Go front, because that's the other cool thing about Alpha Zero. It's able to play Go, Japanese chess, and also Western chess. It was able to master all three of these games with no human knowledge built into it. Other than telling it what the rules are, it was able to master these games to the point that it just really cannot be beat by any of its predecessors. This is the dream of end-to-end -end artificial intelligence, where feature engineering is no longer used, and the deep neural networks are able to figure out how to engineer these features and completely master these domains that previously took a lot of human expertise expertise. What allows the Alpha Zero series to be able to do this is the fact that chess, it can play against itself. So it's sort of now a closed loop. It's playing completely against itself and really it can have as much data as is available in compute time for it to simply keep playing more and more games against itself. So forget big data. This is infinite data. This is as much data as you want to dedicate compute resources to achieving and gaining this data for you. So what I want to do in this part of the course is really connect Alpha Zero to some of the technologies that we've been using in this class. This shows you how you can take these various technologies and weave them together into something that is much more complicated and much more advanced. So we're seeing that these technologies that we learned about in this class are really being used in something that is truly state of the art in terms of Alpha Zero. Now the source code to Alpha Zero is not released. There's been attempts to reproduce this research and you can certainly Google for some of those and find Python code that does some pretty amazing things in terms of this space. I give you a number of links also here if you want to read more about this. There's other definitely much more in-depth videos on YouTube about how to understand what is truly going on with Alpha Zero. This is a high-level overview that connects it to the material taught in my course on deep learning. Just to give you a little bit of a history of this, AlphaGo made headlines in March 15, 2016, when it was able to beat Lee Sedol. Now the game that it did lose against Lee was due to something called random rollouts, and that's something that they eliminated with a version that didn't get quite as much publicity. It's called AlphaGo Master, and AlphaGo Master basically eliminated those random rollouts and had some other improvements as well. None of these are really released in open source, so it's somewhat hard to necessarily track all the features as they go from version to version to version. But this AlphaGo master was able to beat another top Go player and also played 60 online games against other top Go players and was victorious in all of them. AlphaGo Zero was the huge deal where no human knowledge was needed. The previous two were trained on Go literature that talked about many, many games that humans had played over many thousands of years, and using those games 
we were able to give it target values for where it should move next. Alpha Go Zero went away with that altogether and simply played Go against itself and was able to teach itself to be a world-class Go player. Now this may have helped it to some degree because human chess and Go players often work by understanding many openings to games so that they know how to start out the game following these classic openings. Alpha Go Zero, since it had taught itself to play Go completely on its own, would be using techniques and plays and strategies that would be completely alien to anything that a human being would have seen. And that may have been some of its advantage. But nonetheless, it taught itself to play Go, and it taught itself to play Go better than humans have figured out in thousands of years. Then Alpha Zero came along, and that's the one that was able to play multiple different types of games, Go, chess. The real headline here was that Alpha Zero was able to beat Stockfish and Stockfish was something that had been engineered over 10 years to be one of the best chess playing computers available in open source. Now the technologies in this course that you've learned about that are made use of in AlphaZero, I really want to highlight those and as we talk about how AlphaZero actually works at a high level, we'll connect it to some of these technologies that we've used in this course. Definitely convolutional neural networks. This is the technology in deep learning that is absolutely on fire. It is typically used for image recognition. It's also replacing recurrent neural networks for time series prediction. Convolution neural networks are used in re reinforcement learning where you're teaching it to learn to play games. Lots of different things. Convolution nets are used in Go because you essentially map the Go board onto the grid that's being presented to the deep neural network and it outputs literally another data structure of similar size to the Go board, which is essentially the probabilities of each of those squares being the next good move that you might want to take. Deep reinforcement learning. This is used when Alpha Zero and Alpha Go Zero play against itself, it gives it rewards for good gameplay, and it's able to essentially build those better and better neural networks entirely through self-play. Neural network residual layers, these are used in the convolution neural networks, which allow them to go deeper. This is the skip layer technology that we looked at before when we used ResNet and other things. This is, I believe, a Microsoft introduced technology that is very, very integral to modern deep learning. Batch normalization is another thing that is huge that has taken deep learning very much by storm. These were intermixed into the convolution neural networks in these alpha plane engines. Batch normalization, in a nutshell, what it does is if you think of the input layer of a neural network where you have maybe a bunch of features coming in that are in the range zero to one, and maybe a few more features that are in the range of a thousand to 10,000. Those differences are bad. We talked about that before. So you typically normalize it. You take it to z-scores or you do some sort of range normalization to get those numbers into more consistent ranges. Well, why just apply that to the input layer? That can be applied at every single layer throughout the neural network. So this is essentially just taking the activations from the output of the hidden layers and normalizing them to more consistent ranges. You don't have to input normalize so much in alpha zero because the board pieces, the input, the positions of the board, those are all within sort of the same range anyway. So those are the four key technologies that I'm going to highlight that the course made use of. Now AlphaGo, why was Go chosen? Well, the game of Go is 3000 years old, so humans have been thinking about Go for a long, long time. They estimate 40 million players of Go. There are 10 to the power of 170 board positions. By contrast, there are 10 to the power of 78 to 10 to the power of 82 atoms in the known observable universe. So you can't just pre-play Go. Games like checkers and tic-tac-toe, you can essentially play every combination. So you have a completely resolved decision tree that shows you what to do in every situation imaginable to get to either a win or a draw. So that's why Go is particularly interesting for this. This is more combinations than chess. Chess is particularly interesting because there are a lot of combinations and there's a lot of different types of pieces 
on the chessboard compared to a Go board. And it's also much more well-known by Western audiences than Go is, at least among the general population. So the original AlphaGo, the one that was able to beat the human for the first time, it used two convolution neural networks. It used a policy network and a value network. And this is integral to how this thing works. The policy network is shown here. Essentially, you're encoding the board positions into a grid, 19 by 19, that shows the three states of each of the, the squares. It's essentially a black stone, a white stone, or no stone. And the output from this is giving you almost a two-dimensional histogram. So whichever square has the highest value coming out, that is the most desired move or the greatest probability move that the policy network is recommending. Now the value network it only outputs one value, as indicated by that square there. And by the way, all these diagrams here came from Google DeepMind presentations on how AlphaZero actually works. Well, here we're looking at AlphaGo. So this tries to predict the winner. Based on this board, who, who would win? Would black win or would white win? It's just trying to assess the position of the board and who would do the best. And this is how it is trained. Human expert positions were given to AlphaGo, the original one. So this is using Go literature and looking through all these past games that human experts had played and using that as the target. So you'd have the game up to the point documented in literature and then what the literature says is the next best move, that's the target. That's done with regular old supervised learning just like we've used many, many times in this course, then reinforcement learning is used to play a lot of these games out and to train the value network to be able to properly predict who is going to actually win given certain board. Now we'll see why both of these two become very important for something else called a Monte Carlo tree search. Now we did not cover Monte Carlo tree searches in this class. If you've taken general machine learning classes, you may have learned about the min-max algorithm, other, other ways that you can predict or that you can play computer games, very common algorithms that are used. Essentially, the way most of these algorithms work is by reducing the exhaustive search. So the exhaustive search, if we had infinite compute time, what we could do is for any position of the board, just play out every single move that we have that we could possibly make, play all those games to the very, very end. This is where you're dealing with that 10 to the power of 170 and look just at the the positions where we win, if there's none of those left, and when where we draw, and find some ranking algorithm where you pick which of those would be the best move, or just pick any of the winning ones, and just only move forward from that position. But that would require infinite compute time. The universe would likely end before that program was actually done. Eh, don't quote me on that, I'm not an astrophysicist. But it would take a heck of a lot of compute time, even with really nice GPUs. So what this does, what all these techniques do, is the min-max, the alpha-beta, all of those. There's a couple of techniques there. They all work by reducing the amount of this extensive infinite tree that you have to traverse. And this is what the Monte Carlo tree search is doing and that policy and value network both play into that. So the policy network, what its job is to do, the one that is giving you the prediction on the next best move to make, it is essentially reducing the breadth. So it's keeping you from having to go too far in the left and right of this tree. Is it's constantly predicting what it thinks is the next best move, and it's slowly working its way down this infinite search space that we have. That's what the policy network is for. Policy network is here. It's the one that is predicting which move is the best. The value network, the other neural network that we had, is reducing the depth. Essentially, as you're using the policy network to work your way down, you can essentially choose to call the value network and see who the anticipated winner is. If it's not you, or if it's a draw, or if you have better options available because you'd want to just look at the winning positions, 
If you don't have any of those, look at the drawing positions and work your way down. This can clip off having to go too far. If you've already gone down a branch and it's simply doesn't look like a, a good position for you to move into, you can stop and not have to all the way go down to the leaf node. And the leaf node is the end of the game. The amount of hardware for AlphaGo. So it is essentially using those neural networks in lockstep to, to go through all four of these and perform the Monte Carlo tree search. This requires quite a few TPUs. This requires 50 TPUs during play. Now a TPU is like a GPU, except it's Google's tensor processing unit. It's a Google thing. You can use these in Google Colab, and you can also use them on Google Cloud if you need a larger number of TPUs. Since it's a proprietary hardware, I have not done a great deal with TPUs, but it is something I am looking at adding to this course in the future. If there's interest in TPUs, definitely let me know in the comments. Now, AlphaGo Zero. How this was able to work with the reinforcement learning is entirely through self-play. So what is great about this is they combined the policy and value neural networks into one single neural network. They reported that that helped greatly with reduction of overfitting through regularization. And when they're playing it, they are essentially using the neural network completely one time to predict the next move. So they are constantly training the neural network on the results from the games that it was playing itself. So it does not have to go through this step-by-step, -step, go deeper and deeper down into the tree. The Monte Carlo tree search is still there. That is used while it's playing itself but fundamentally, that self-play is being used to build new policy and new value networks as it goes through the, the neural network and trains it. Because of this, you essentially then end up with only a single TPU is needed when it's actually playing. And this is very cool because this is another great advancement in the end-to-end -end quest of deep learning where essentially you are able to train the neural network completely to do everything now that Monte Carlo tree search is being used to train it, but it's not being used in the final result where it is actually playing against the human player. And this is pretty good for Alpha, Alpha Go Zero. It shows you essentially the improvements of each of these as they got to here and showing the overall ELO rating for how well it was able to improve which, with each of these. The other thing I'll point out too that was great when they generalized this to chess is when Stockfish was created, the program that it beat, considerable human expertise from grandmasters. If you look on the webpage for Stockfish, there's like 20 people working on each of these. Board representation, search, transposition table, move ordering, selectivity, evaluation, and in-game table bases. These are all major components of non-deep learning chess computers that essentially Stockfish had to have created over a decade by human experts that in about a month, AlphaGo Zero was able to reproduce. Well, this is a quick overview of the technologies from the course that were used in Alpha Zero. There are definitely more in-depth coverages of this on the internet if you would like to see more truly how you could do an entire course just on creating games for chess and Go and these kind of things. If you're interested in a deeper dive, I encourage you to look at some of the links that I provided earlier in this video. Thank you for watching this video. In the next module, we're going to look at how you actually deploy and make use of neural networks in other applications. This content changes often, so subscribe to the channel to stay up to date on this course and other topics in artificial intelligence.